Um, again, thanks for joining us. I am Brad Wyra with uh, Alton Technologies. Um, if, if you have any uh, background noise, please be sure and put your phones on mute. Um, I, I will give opportunity at the end of this presentation to ask questions if you would like. Also, feel free to use the uh, chat feature if you have questions throughout the, uh, the presentation, and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. So we're going to talk about the MDaemon log files. This is not going to be a comprehensive lesson on all of the MDaemon log files. It's going to be uh, more of a little bit of a high-level overview of how to track a message as it travels through the various queues by reading your log files. We'll also talk about how to identify certain common uh, issues with email delivery and to identify certain types of uh, activities when a, uh, during a message transmission. So, first of all, when troubleshooting a mail delivery issue, you can review these following log files, which by default are located inside the MDaemon logs directory. For starters, you have the MDaemon SMTP end log. Now, this log contains a list of all inbound SMTP, con SMTP connections, whether they're from a connecting mail client, say, for example, when a, user, when a local user is sending an outbound email message, which goes out from his or her Outlook into MDaemon and then out from MDaemon en route to the receiving server, or from an, ex from an external server, say, for example, when an outside sender is sending mail through his or her mail server, and that server sends messages to mdaemon en route to the local end user. So that's the SMTP end log, which accepts inbound connections from a mail client or from a, an external mail server. Then we have the SMTP out log. This log contains a list of all outbound SMTP connections. When a user sends an outbound message, that message is first sent to the inbound queue via SMTP in and then MDaemon performs an MX record lookup on the receiving domain, places the message in the remote queue, and then creates an outbound SMTP connection to the receiving mail server. And then those outbound sessions will be reflected in the, in the uh, SMTP out log file. Then we have the MDaemon routing log. This log can be used to trace inbound and outbound messages through the queues on their way to their destination. An inbound message will arrive in the inbound queue and then it will be routed to the local queue before being delivered to the user. An outbound message will arrive in the inbound queue, and then it will be sent to the uh, remote queue on its way to the receiving server. If, uh, if a message delivery is unsuccessful because the receiving server is down, and then, the, then the message may be sent to the retry queue before being placed into the bad queue after a period of time has, has uh, elapsed. The, uh, the routing log will help you determine when messages are placed in the various mail queues. So if you're troubleshooting a mail delivery issue and you want to follow a message's path, this is one way to do it. Now, the routing log does not contain a comprehensive view of everything that takes place. It just shows you when a message goes from one queue to the next. Then we have the MDMN anti-spam log, which will show you all anti-spam related activity. We have the MDM and system log, which shows various services, such as the SMTP service, the POP services, the spam filter, starting and stopping. It also will show when semaphore files are being processed. It will show the daily maintenance events that, are, that take place every, every day, such as the uh, midnight uh, cleanup event and so forth. Also, it will show account pruning activities and other types of activity. And then we have the MDM and all log file, which shows all of the activity. So if you're tracking a mail delivery issue, it, on the one hand, you can review the SMTP in log to see that the inbound connection came in. But if you want to see all activity related to that message, then uh, you, you could go to the MDM in all log file to get that information. So let's go over the steps that a message takes when it's being sent inbound uh, from an external source, say uh, somebody from Gmail is sending an email to one of your local users. Well, the path that it takes is first it goes into, uh, first an inbound SMTP connection is established from the sending server or gateway. The message is then placed into a temporary queue where antivirus and the initial uh, spam filtering 
uh, processing takes place. From there, it then goes into the holding queue, and then the SMTP session is terminated at that time. From that point, it is routed then to the local queue, and then the spam filter processes it again using what we call the queue-based scan, and then various other security features, antivirus, and content filtering also take place at that time, at which point the message is then placed in the user's mailbox. So let me show you a little demonstration here of what I'm, what I'm referring to. So let me move some things around on my screen. So we're talking about an inbound message here. And uh, you should be able to see my window here. Um, if you can't, please uh, let me know. Um, I've got examples of three logs. I've got the SMTP in log, I've got the routing log, and I've got the MDAMON all log file. Let's go to the SMTP in log first. So we'll open this up with Notepad. And if you have any trouble viewing this window, uh, there's a button, it's a square looking button at the upper right hand corner of your window that will allow your screen to kind of zoom and pan as I move my mouse. So if you can't see everything, that should help make it a little bit easier to track, my, to track uh, what I'm doing. So this is the SMTPN log. And we see that a session was created by this line highlighted here. We accepted an inbound SMTP connection from this IP, excuse me here, from, a, from this IP address, and then this is my local IP address. Then the, uh, once the uh, connection was established, we sent out our 220 banner information. So basically this is all of the information that you will find on the site policy. So if you go to your security menu in MDAMON, and then you go to uh, security settings, and you scroll down to site policy, that's where this information is entered. Okay, so the mail client issued an EHLO command rather than an HLO. So EHLO allows uh, extended uh, commands. It's, it uses ESMTP or extended SMTP. Then the MDAMON sends back to the client, okay, uh, nice to meet you, 250, okay, nice to meet you. These are the, then it says, okay, these are the commands that I will accept with these 250 lines. I will accept the ETRN, I will accept log uh, cram MD5, I will accept start TLS, I will accept the size command. Okay, so I wanted to initiate an, a secure sockets layer connection, an SSL connection via start TLS. So my sending client issues a start TLS command. MDAMON says, okay, let's begin TLS negotiation. All right, at this point, SSL negotiation is successful. And notice at this point, the connecting client, again, issued an EHLO command. This is all taking place again within the same session. So once SSL negotiation is successful, again, we restart the EHLO process. Again, we come back with the 250 and the various commands that will accept. And at this point, the sending client can issue its mail from command. All right, now notice in this mail from command, I have uh, the following string of characters before the actual from email address. It begins with PRVS. That is a header that is added by backscatter protection. So backscatter protection is a security feature which allows you to prevent your users from receiving bounce back messages in response to messages that they never sent. That, tip, that happens when their email address was forged in the return path and sent out to a lot of recipients from a spammer. A spammer got a hold of their email address. So backscatter protection will look for this, this uh, header, this, this, this key, in all bounce back messages. If it doesn't find it, it knows that it is really not legitimate that it's backscatter, and then it discards it. Okay, so after we issue the mail from command, we, we then issue the uh, 250 OK, sender OK. Then the client issues the receipt to command. Then we issue the 250 OK. Then we begin our data command. And then a temp file is created. So this message goes into a temporary queue as indicated by this line here. Notice the name of the file, okay? So that's going to change as it passes through the various mail queues, and I'll show you more examples of this. And then the message is passed through antivirus, as shown here. Then the message is passed through the spam filter, and then spam, this, your spam assassin results are shown here. 
Then it tells you what the spam score is. This is, again, based on the initial SMTP session, the initial scan. And then finally, the message is created, and it's placed in the inbound queue with this file name. M. Damon sends to the client 250 OK. The client issues the quick command. M. Damon says, OK, see you in cyberspace, and then the connection is terminated. At this point, the message resides in the inbound queue, and then M. Damon can perform other activities, routing, and other security measures. Let me show you what now takes place. Now that we've actually got possession of the message, OK, we go to the routing log. All right? So there is, there's not a whole lot of information in the routing log. Uh, what it basically does is it shows you the path that the message takes. This message was placed in the inbound queue, and this is where it started. That's by this line highlighted here. This is the, uh, the name of the file. Each message has a message ID header, and I'll talk about this a little bit more when I talk to you about the mdaemon all log file, which we'll talk about next. From the inbound queue, this message is then sent to the local queue. That's by indica indicated by this line right here. Okay, so it goes into the C directory, it goes into M daemon, it goes into the Q's subdirectory, into the local queue, and then this is the name of the file. Now, one thing to notice, by the way, is these file names can change as they pass between the queues. What does not change is the message ID. This message ID header is the same as this one because it is the same message. So what's happening here is Okay, the message is in the the message was accepted by M. Damon and placed in the local queue. In this part of it, it started in the local queue and then was finally deposited into the user's mailbox under my M. Damon users directory. These file names can change as they pass from one step to the next. And I'll, you'll see more examples of this throughout this presentation, but this message ID will not, which is good because this allows us to track it through the various logs. Now that we have discussed the SMTP in and the routing log, let's go on to the mdaemon all log file. Okay, so that's this file right here. And this will kind of allow us to piece it all together and see everything else that is taking place. So again, this is what we saw in the SMTP in log. We accepted a connection from the client, and then SSL negotiation took place. I'm not going to cover every single line, uh, but I will cover the, the main ones. Again, we talked about the mail from command, including the uh, line that's added by backscatter protection. We covered the RCPT2. And then if we scroll down a little bit further, message is being passed through antivirus. It's, in go it's then going through the spam filter. This line right here indicates that the spam score is currently a zero and that a 12, if, if it is a 12 or higher, then it will be discarded as it passes at the SMTP level. The message was created and placed in the inbound queue, and then the message was saved, and then the inbound session was terminated. At this point, here is our, here's our message ID. Now watch what happens when I copy the message ID. Okay, so we'll go to Edit, uh, Copy, and then we'll do a Find, and I'll paste it. And then by hitting Next, it allows us to track the message as it passes through the, the queues. Okay, so now it's uh, going to the local queue, and then now it is going, it's being processed by the spam filter, and then now it's being processed by antivirus, and then now it is being placed into the local queue, and then from here, if we scroll down, at this point, it's placed in the user's mailbox. So knowing how to track a message by its message ID header is very handy because sometimes if the process is interrupted throughout the, throughout the delivery path, um, you know, like let's say, for example, you're troubleshooting an issue and you can't find it going all the way to its um, end destination, whether that be inbound or outbound, then you might check other things on your network to see if something else is blocking it, third-party antivirus and things of that nature. All right, so that's how we track an inbound message. And then next, we're going to talk about tracking an outbound message. Okay, so the process for tracking an outbound message, and it goes like this. 
we get an inbound SMTP connection from the mail client, such as Outlook or World Client. The message is then placed into a temporary queue, and then antivirus and the initial spam filter processing takes place, just like it happened for, the, uh, for an inbound message. The um, message is then placed into the uh, inbound queue. The SMTP session terminates, and then the message is routed to the remote queue in this case. At that point, security, antivirus, and content filtering take place on the message. And then at this point, an outbound SMTP connection is established to the receiving mail server. This is where MDAMON will perform a DNS record look on the domain passed in the uh, receipt to command to determine where to send the message. So it will look up the receiving server's, uh, the receiving domain's MX record, and then it will try to find the A record associated with that as well to determine the IP address to send it to. Then the message is sent to the receiving server and the SMTP session is closed. All right, so let me demonstrate this for you, or let me show you showing, uh, by showing you what happens in the logs. Okay, so in this example, again, we're going to start with the SMTP in log, okay? All right, so in this case, we accepted a connection from the mail client. And then I'm just going to skip all the way down to the key points here. A temp file was created into the temporary queue. And then it went through uh, antivirus processing as shown here. And it was placed in the inbound queue. And then the message was saved and the SMTP session was terminated. At that point, other processing activity, security, antivirus, and so forth took place. And then an outbound SMTP connection was established. So if we look at the SMTP outlog, okay, this one has a little bit more information. First of all, we create a new session, an outbound SMTP session. This message started out in the remote queue. Now, notice, by the way, the file name it begins with PD. I'll talk about that a little bit more as we go throughout this, but that file name will change from an MD to a PD once it has passed through the content filter. All right, so now we are attempting an SMTP connection to the recipient uh, domain. We do an MX record lookup for the domain, and then we attempt to connect to the uh, server that we, that we found from the MX record lookup. Then we resolve the A record for that host name. Then we find out the IP address that we send it to. So once we find the IP address by doing an A record lookup, we send it to that IP address by attempting an SMTP connection. Once the connection is established, as shown in this line, then we're waiting for the protocol to start. And this is where the receiving server issues its site policy. Again, this is the same information that I talked about a few minutes ago, where you go to the security menu and you go to site policy, and you put that information on that screen. That's what's sent back with these two 20 lines here, okay? So mdaemon issues an EHLO command to the receiving server. The receiving server says, 250, hello, nice to meet you, and these are the commands I will accept. M. Damon says, okay, I would like to establish a start TLS connection. Okay, the receiving server says, okay, begin TLS nego negotiation. We now have a secure sockets layer uh, connection, a secure encrypted connection. And then again, within this same session, we reissue the EHLO command. We see the same 250 responses and the various commands that re the receiving server will accept. We issue the mail from. Notice again the PRVS, which is the header that's added by Backscatter Protection. We put in our recipient. We enter the data command. And then we send the message from the remote queue to the destination server. And then the transfer is complete. The receiving server issues a 250 OK message saved. We issue the quit command. And then the session is terminated. So that's an outbound message. Um, from them, Damon, to an external recipient. Now that we've covered SMTP in and out, let's put it all together using the, uh, the first of all, the routing log, and then we'll go to the SMT, the, uh, the M. Damon all log file to show you what, it, what all is taking place. So on the routing log, there's not a lot of information here because it's already started out in the inbound queue, and then it was sent to the remote queue on its way to the recipient. 
So in this case, there's not a lot more information that you'll need to know for routing purposes. But what, you, what will come in more handy is the information in the uh, MDAMON all log file. So with this, okay, uh, with this, MDAMON, uh, th th again, this, is, this, is a, this will contain all of the inbound and outbound SMTP information. So we've got, we've accepted an SMTP connection from the MOC client. And then the, uh, the, the MOC client used SMTP authentication and authenticated as uh, bradexample.com is indicated right here. And then I'm just going to skip down since we've covered these commands here. We've issued our mail from, we've issued our receipt to, and then the message was placed in the inbound queue, and then the session was terminated. We have a message ID header. Now that we've got our message ID header, and we're using the mdaemon all log file to see all activity, not just SMTP type activity, I can show you what else is taking place. So I'm going to copy the message ID header. I'm going to do a find. I'm going to paste that message ID header, and I'm going to hit next. All right. So now the message is placed into the remote queue. It's going through Security Plus antivirus processing. The message is then going through the uh, content filter. Let me scroll down a little bit here. And then at this point, it is going out to the remote queue. Notice, by the way, the message, once it's gone through the content filter, this file name changed. Recall that it began with MD. And this was the file name of the message. And then after it passed through the content filter, the MD was changed to a PD, all right? Uh, but we're still mainly concerned with the message ID header in this case. We hit next. Message is now, uh, so now the message is being processed from the remote queue. And then uh, this section above, it shows that we were establishing the SMTP connection to the receiving server. Um, let me go back and do my find again so that we don't get sidetracked. Down here, okay, the message was placed into the remote queue and then it was saved and the session was successful. So that's how you track a message through the various logs, whether it be inbound and outbound. So if you have a number of other steps in between, that message ID header will become very valuable for you if you know how to, uh, if you just remember how to track it using the find command and then the find next command to track it through uh, its path through the various mail queues. All right, so that's kind of an overview of inbound and, and outbound message tracking by reading the logs. Now, let's talk about some common issues that you'll find in your logs and what to look for in mdaemon when you find them. So for example, let's say for example we have mail that's sent to an unknown local user or to an inbound uh, or to an invalid address. Well in this case an inbound connection was made from the outside. M. Damon then issued the standard 220 uh, greeting. Let me see if I can uh, point it out here. Okay, right here. And then uh, okay, M. Damon replied with uh, the EHLO, uh, it sent the EHLO command, and then it sent out all the commands that it will accept. We then issued a mail from command, and then the RCPT2, and and Damon said, okay, we do not recognize this sender. This is an unknown local user. In other words, they used the local domain, but M. Damon doesn't recognize this account on that local domain. So it sent back a 550 uh, recipient unknown. All right, so let's go to the next screen to show you how to set that up or what's the setting that's re that that's referring to. If you go to the security settings menu and you go to relay control and mdaemon, this box that I'm showing here, SMTP RCPT address, must exist if it uses a local domain. The reason that message was kicked back was because this box was checked here and the account did not actually exist on the local domain. So now let's talk a little bit about spoofing, all right? So in this example, MDAMON performed a reverse lookup on the EHLO domain, which in this case is Lab Manager uh, Facts. So there's the EHLO that was issued. And then here's where MDAMON is performing a lookup on that, uh, on that EHLO command or domain. And then from here, it was unable to find a valid PTR record for Lab Manager Facts. So it did a PTR lookup, an IP lookup here. 
and couldn't find it. So it said uh, server reports domain name unknown. And then the session is closed and it sends a 550 sender unknown. All right? So that is based on this setting right here. If you go to the security settings menu and you go to the reverse lookup screen, the box here that says the perform lookup on the EHLO HELO domain is checked. And this is the setting that caused that message to be kicked uh, back that time. So what if we have message that's sent from an unknown local user? In other words, spoofing is involved. Well, okay, in this example, mdaemon performed a reverse lookup on the domain passed in the mail from command. So that is right here. Okay, so there's the mail from example.com, and then uh, right, let me get to it here, right here. And then mdaemon performs a lookup on example.com, and the lookup fails because it didn't exist, and Damon sends the 550 and says, sender unknown, all right? That is based on this setting right here. SMTP mail address must exist if it uses a local domain. Again, under the relay control screen from within the security settings uh, menu. Now, what about mail that's sent from an IP address that does not have a valid PTR record? Well, in this example, as you can see by the area highlighted in red here, mdaemon performed a PTR record lookup on the connection and then dropped the connection upon a mismatch. So it dropped the connection based on the uh, a setting that's found under the reverse lookup screen on the security settings menu, and that is this setting right here, perform lookup on, uh, on PTR record uh, mismatch or PTR uh, closed connection if no PTR record match. And if a sender is blacklisted by spam house, so in this case, the uh, information highlighted in red, we did a DNS blacklist lookup on the IP address that is connecting and found it to be listed on spam house. And that is from within the spam filter. If you go to the DNS blacklist hosts configuration screen from within the spam filter and you enable DNS blacklist lookups, and then we have zen.spamhouse.org as one of our blacklists. So that message was rejected by this blacklist here. And then if a sender is blocked by dynamic screening, so these two lines of, of uh, log file that I'm showing here, dynamic screening added this IP address for 10 minutes because it failed three authentication attempts. That's based on the dynamic screen uh, security setting. We've got the top box checked to enable dynamic screening. That arrow on the right-hand side is pointing to uh, blocking IPs at fail three authentication attempts. So that's where you'll find that setting. And then if a message was blocked by the spam filter, so in this case, the, the message was processed through the spam filter. It scored a 9.5, as indicated by this line here. A message is considered spam in this case if it scores a four or above. Here is a breakdown of the various spam-like components of the message and their corresponding spam scores. Those all got added up to include, uh, to come up with a 9.5, which is higher than 4, and therefore the message was counted as spam. And that is based on your spam filter. This setting right here, a message is spam if its score is greater than or equal to a 4. So a message arrives via the SMTPN connection. It's then initially scanned at the SMTP level. And if its spam score at that time is a 12 or above, by, indicated by this setting right down here, then uh, the message will be rejected and it will not be allowed to uh, continue through mdaemon. If the message scores a lower than a 12, then it is allowed to pass through other spam filtering tests, or what we call the Q-based scan. The results of those additional scans will adjust the message's spam score up or down. And then after all, after all that scoring is in place, the message is then counted as spam if its score at that time is a four or above, and then handled accordingly based on the section, uh, the settings under the section what to do with spam is shown uh, down here. And if we have an address on a sender blacklist, as shown here with the uh, text uh, toward the bottom that's highlighted in red here, that's based on 
this setting right here, if you go to your security settings menu and you go to sender blacklist, we have the address listed here. And then if we're screening out a particular host, in this case, host screening kicked in and mdaemon does not accept mail from mail1.altin.com. That's based on this setting. If you go to the host screen from within the security settings menu, and that host is listed here. And then finally, in this example, the, uh, it states here that this particular address is not, uh, is currently restricted to local mail only, and then it sends back the recipient unknown command. If we go to the account editor for that particular account, that's based on this screen right here under the restrictions. This account is limited to a local mail only. And then if you have a site policy, I think I showed an example of this earlier, those 220 lines, that's based on your site policy configuration screen under the security settings window. So one other thing that can happen is gray listing. If, uh, if a message is being gray listed, Endaymon will send back the 451 gray listing enabled try again in 15 minutes. And that's based on this setting right here. We're under the security settings menu. And we go to the other section at the very bottom and click on gray listing. And then we defer the connection or the delivery attempt for, in this case, 15 minutes. So that's where you find gray listing. So this was not a comprehensive summary of everything you'll find in the logs, but it'll at least give you an idea of, number one, how to kind of follow a log as it goes through the various mail queues by tracking it in the inbound, outbound, and routing logs, how to identify a message as spam, and, and how to troubleshoot basic issues and where to find the corresponding settings. So we covered the message routing. We covered uh, messages that are sent to an invalid address, spoofing, um, invalid IPs via the PTR lookup, uh, sender blacklist, dynamic screening, spam filtering and site policies and so forth. So that's just a, a brief overview of reading MDAMON log files. I do plan on doing more webinars in the future covering some of the other logs that we have in a little bit greater detail, but this will at least help you understand what's taking place when one of your users says, I'm trying to send a message to this particular recipient and they are not getting my messages or I'm not getting their messages. What's going on? Well, this will at least allow you to look at those log files and help determine what is taking place. Now, there are those situations where if you have a, a firewall or a third-party antivirus that's scanning the mdaemon directory, um, it, those can cause problems. And if that's the case, uh, for example, if you're reviewing a log and the message appears to just disappear and doesn't get onto its destination, those are some of the areas you can look. Um, that's by no means a comprehensive example, though there could be other factors. So. Do we have any questions at this time? I don't see any questions on the chat bar, so feel free to jump in um, via the phone line here if you have any questions. And I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. I'm also going to put this uh, recording on our webinars page at altin.com. Any questions? All right, well, thank you for joining, everyone. And uh, have a great day, and we'll talk again soon.